Oh, oh, I don't oh, know. oh, oh, oh. Come out and enjoy the pool. Hey folks, I'm Walter and welcome to this overview of Virgin Voyages and the Scarlet Lady. You know, going into this cruise, I wasn't really sure what to expect and I honestly thought I was going to be a one and done. You know, based on all the things that I had seen on the other vloggers and some of the media reports, it didn't really seem like it was going to be a cruise line for me. I mean, the food looked good, but everything else about it just seemed odd and weird. But we were pleasantly surprised with an amazing cruise. And I want to share with you the thing that surprised us that we didn't know about or were not expecting based on everything we heard before we got on the ship. Now I have provided chapters, so if you need to jump to a certain section of the review, you can do that. Maybe we should do a twist. Now, first off, we did sail as rock stars. So anybody who's in a suite is either a rock star or a mega rock star. But we didn't start out that way. See, we booked a sea terrace on our original cruise, and then that cruise got canceled because of the pandemic. And then Virgin gave us 200% future cruise credit. So what we paid for the balcony plus the same amount to use. So we decided to upgrade to a cheeky corner suite. That's an aft suite on the corner. It was 12011A with a 500 square foot balcony, which is bigger than most of the cabins that we've stayed on up to now. But I'll talk about that Rockstar experience and the cabin a little bit later. Now the Scarlet Lady can hold about 2,800 passengers when she's full. We had around 1,100, so we were less than 50% full for this cruise. Let's talk about the ship, the Scarlet Lady. What really surprised me was how intimate the ship felt. I mean, it felt like a mega yacht, or sometimes it didn't even feel like a ship at all. It felt like we were on a resort. And that's because there were no towering spaces. You didn't have a three-story atrium, a two-story main dining room, and just other big spaces that made you feel much smaller on the ship. There was a lot of like one-story ceilings, so it felt very small and intimate. And then there were nooks and crannies and seating everywhere on the ship. And the ship really felt like it was designed for socialization. It wasn't designed to be a big showy ship and oh, look at our ship, look how beautiful the ship is. It was welcome to your private resort. A very come as you are, kick your shoes off and relax. Now in some ways the ship did look utilitarian, especially the way they did the lifeboats on deck seven. I mean, I've not seen them mounted just up on top of the deck like this. A lot of times they're underneath the deck where you can't see them. But what they did between the lifeboats on deck seven, I absolutely love. They made two big patios on either side of the ship with all kinds of different seating. So you wanna sit out there and read a book, you can do that. You wanna sit out there in the sun, you can do that. You wanna just relax, have a group conversation. Now there's no shade on those patios, but if you want shade, just be on the opposite side of the ship from the sun. The ship itself is actually a really nice shade on those patios. Then going aft on deck seven, you come to the dock, which is a stunning social dining gathering space right above the wake of the ship. They have some day beds out there, they have chairs, they have a grill off to one side and they're preparing tapas during the day, which are absolutely outstanding. Really good bar right inside at the dock house. It's a really nice spot just to sit, relax and watch the wake go out. And if you wanna do some sunning, you can do that or put the umbrellas up and just chill on those day beds. And looking up at the aft of the ship, I love the design back here. I mean, one, it almost looks like a spaceship when you're standing down there on deck seven. And two, I love the way the balconies angle out as you go up. So that gives you more privacy. On a lot of ships, they angle in so the folks in the upper balconies can look right down into all the balconies down below them and see what's going on. So the way Virgin designed this, you don't have people just looking right down on top of you. The roundabout was actually kind of cool. It was like a central hub of the ship. Instead of just being this big massive atrium that everybody just kind of walks through and goes, ooh, ah, there was actually a purpose to it. You know, it was the central hub to take you to ice cream, to pizza, to the tattoos, to all the things that were just right there. One thing I've never seen on a ship is windows in the casino. Yeah, like behind some of the table games and some of the slot machines, actual huge porthole windows that look to the outside. It was actually really nice seeing natural light coming into the casino. And while we're there, the casino is non-smoking, which we really appreciated. As far as I know, Virgin and Celebrity are the only two that have non-smoking casinos. Now they do have a smoking room right off to the side. So if you got a light up, you can do it right there off to the side. It's not sprawling all over the place like it does on some ships that we've been on, but I think it's just the right side for a ship of this size. A cool use of technology was the elevators. Now, first off, they're color coded so that you know if you're front, mid, aft. But secondly, the whole back wall is a video screen. So either you're feeling like you're underwater or when you're in a port, they have this very useful screen on there that gives you the basic information that you need 
primarily what time you need to be back on the ship. And I think my favorite feature about Virgin Voyages is the bracelet. This is it. You don't need a key card. You don't need one of those big medallion thingies. This is it. This gets you in the room. This pays for all your bills and whatnot. So anything you need to do with the ship, this is it. You just flash this little thing out. I wish the entire cruise industry would get something nice and small and light like this. So it was that intimacy that really surprised and impressed us. I mean, this is a ship that can hold almost 3,000 people. This is a big ship with 16 decks, but it didn't feel like it. You know, one story ceiling, a lot of smaller venues versus big venues, the bars, the restaurants, everything was smaller. So it forced people to spread out rather than congregate in one place. <laughs> So what about the overall vibe and the crew on board the ship? I mean, this is what everybody wanted to know when we got back. Like, Walt, what was it like? I mean, you guys are old. You're not like the demographic they're looking for. I mean, was there techno music everywhere? Were there loud parties going on all the time? Were there sex parties going on everywhere? No, <laughs> no, it wasn't. You know what it was like? The vibe reminded me of celebrity. If you cruise on celebrity cruise lines, you know what I mean? It's a casual elegance. I call it the, the white glove treatment without the stuffy attitude. Well, Virgin was like that, but even more casual. It was very much a come as you are. I, I feel like it's an adult summer camp almost. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of play, things like the pajama party or yeah. like all those kinds of parties that feel like it's like fun play. It's fun. I like seeing adults uh, free themselves a little bit. Exactly. It's a good time. And no, there was not techno music blasting everywhere. The only time we had techno music was when the DJ was doing his set. Sometimes in vinyl, usually up by the pool. And we actually noticed that, hey, the music on board is actually really good. It was like a mix of all kinds of different styles of music, and it was real music. It wasn't that Muzak stuff. So during the day, it's a very chill and relaxed atmosphere. I mean, you've got arts and crafts, you've got trivia, you've got scavenger hunt, you've got the social club down there that has all kinds of games. There's a retro arcade with all the classic games from when I was a kid, which was awesome. And They've got board games from when we were a kid right up to now. I mean, shoots and ladders, uh, hungry, hungry hippos, rock'em, sock'em robots. And then of course they got Cards Against Humanity, exploding kittens and stuff like that. So the vibe was almost like the ship is designed to bring out our inner child, just to let us relax and have fun. There's no kids running around, so we can just be ourselves. And yes, they do sell sex toys in the sundry store. Yes, they do have a sexologist or whatever she's called who puts on some shows in the manor and they are made to be provocative. And if that's what you want to go see, well then book your time and go see the show. But if you don't want to see it, nobody says you have to see it and there's nothing going on throughout the ship that's going to make you feel uncomfortable. There's no central cruise director that you're going to see everywhere and hear in the announcements. And in fact, there's no announcements on the ship at all, really. Uh, the captain made an announcement when we left Miami. I think he made another announcement when we came into Miami, and then there were two announcements to tell us that we could get off the ship at the port. But other than that, you're not gonna hear anything. Hi, I'm from Paul Beach, Elaine, at your Elaine. service. Yes, nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Yeah. But the crew itself, now we heard that quite a bit of the public facing crew has actually come from Disney, Seaborn, and Celebrity. So that's the level of service that you're gonna get, and they are good. Now, first of all, you've already paid the gratuity at the beginning of the cruise, so the crew isn't like working extra hard and trying to be in your face so that they're gonna get a tip at the end of the cruise. They're giving you really good attentive service, but they're not trying too hard. And we did hear from the crew that they are among the highest paid in the cruise industry, and they get free Wi-Fi. Can you believe it? Crews on most of the other cruise lines have to pay for Wi-Fi just to stay in touch with friends and family or to keep up with what's going on in this world, they get it for free, which is how it should be. Please, because I was okay. What? What? I'm not going to stop rolling. We're still rolling. Hi. Hi, how, how are you? you? Yeah, I but feel I, like a princess when I you know, say it. I see that. Look at that. Isn't that great? I would say that the level of service that we got was right up there with Disney and Celebrity. I consider those two to be the best of the best in terms of service. Virgin was right there with those two. So the vibe is not sex parties and parties all day and techno music blasting everywhere. It's a very cool, chill, come as you are, relaxed ship. So how good is that free Wi-Fi that you get with your fare? 
I have to admit, it was the best Wi-Fi we've ever had at sea, both in terms of signal and the speed that we got. Now, Rebecca just stayed with the regular free Wi-Fi and she was able to play TikTok videos all day long. She could not stream YouTube. It, it would crash when she tried to do that, but she could play TikToks all day long. Now me, I paid the extra $10 a day to get the high speed. I was able to do two one hour live streams from the ship, no problem at all. And I could stream video from pretty much any site I wanted to. So signal and speed were excellent throughout the ship. Look at that, how beautiful is that? Huh? Absolutely gorgeous. Rebecca and I are both foodies and Virgin has really been hyping. You know, we have an elevated dining experience, we have elevated elevated food, it will be an experience every single night. So did it live up to the hype? I'm happy to say yes, it really did. What's really cool about not having a big main dining room, not having a buffet, you don't feel like, you know, sometimes you feel like cattle when you're going into the main dining room. You got a long line of people and you're just kind of walking in or the buffet, there's so many people just going around. It's not really an experience, right? It's just eat a meal and go on to the next thing. With Virgin, every meal was a dining experience because you are truly going to a restaurant. So like we said before, you know, the restaurants have these little nooks and crannies. So you have like these little groups over here, these little groups over here. You're not sitting down seeing hundreds of people all around you. You're seeing dozens of people all around you and it makes it a more intimate experience. So I have to say the dining on Virgin is more of an experience than it is just getting something to eat. And there are some extra items on all of the menus called treat yourself that are an extra charge if you want to go ahead and purchase them like this ridiculous tomahawk steak that our friend George got at the wake at dinner. George, how are we doing, my friend there? How is that? Very good. It is delicious. Perfectly prepared. If you're in the wake, on a Scarlet Lady, order the tomahawk. But you can go the entire week without paying a thing for any food. And that even includes the candy in the Social Club Diner. It's like taffy and some chocolates and stuff in there. And the galley is their answer to a buffet. So instead of a buffet, it is set up food hall style with stations that make a particular thing. And most of the food up there is made to order. So it's fresh. So right there, it's a step above most of the buffets that just have food just sitting out there for hours at a time. The food was quite good. Now where it does break down is when it's busy. So one morning we went up there for breakfast and it looked like the entire ship was there because we were in Puerto Plata. So what they want you to do is go take a seat and place an order restaurant style with a waiter. Well, there were so many people in there, the waiters were just running everywhere and it was like five minutes, we still hadn't gotten anybody to come to us. Now the chef at Let's Taco About It noticed that we were just sitting there being ignored. So he actually walked over and took our order and then one of the waiters saw him and stop and I was able to order something. So if the galley is busy, you're gonna have to have some patience because it might take some time for a waiter to actually get to you. You, but when it's slower, you can just walk up to any station and go ahead and place the order yourself. One pleasant dining surprise was the afternoon tea. It was absolutely delicious. It was lovely. Ironically, they charge for it. On most cruise ships, the afternoon tea is included. However, on this ship, uh, at the time, it was $19 for tea only and $35 if you wanted to get champagne because it's in the SIP Champagne Lounge. But even though you have to pay for it, I would say go do it. It is a lovely afternoon tea. Now I have a full dining episode linked either here or here. It's a full 40 minutes of pretty much all the venues, everything that we ate, including the Test Kitchen, Pink Agave, the Voig, Razzle Dazzle, pretty much everything. We ate just about everywhere. And really the only disappointment was the Bimini Beach Resort. The food was meh, it was okay. And it was amplified by the fact that the food was so good on the ship itself. Anna, highly recommends the Scarlet Lady, so I will gladly try a Scarlet Lady, please. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Look, 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 look. Look, 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 look at it, look at it, look at it. Oh my God, it's so beautiful, yay. Oh my God. Look oh, at the wow. inside of that. Look at the inside of that. Dang. There is some serious dark chocolate. Christine, look at that. Ooh. Ooh. So does Virgin Voyages live up to the hype? Well, prior to this cruise, I would have told you that Disney has the best food at sea, cross the board. But now, Virgin Voyages is right there and celebrities just a notch below. That's how good the food is. I mean, they said they were gonna deliver a good experience. They delivered an outstanding food experience. Now, before we move on, if you like what we're doing, if we're bringing you some value in your cruise research, please consider subscribing. And thank you so much for your support. And this is a nutty old fashioned. Cheers to all of you. Oh my God. That could be one of the best old fashioned I have ever had. 
it was a good old fashioned. And I got a couple other old fashions on the ship, on the Rock Bourbon Bar and a few other places, really, really good. But even the pool bar, okay, usually the pool bar is slushy drinks, it's fast drinks, it's beer. I got outstanding cocktails at the pool bar. If you're a fan of tequila and mezcal, they have over 120 tequila and mezcal in pink agave alone. They said it's the most at sea. Now, before this cruise, I would have told you that the best bar at sea is the world-class bar on Celebrity Cruises. Now, pretty much any bar on the Virgin Voyages is really, really good. And if you don't want the alcohol, you prefer mocktails. Rebecca was getting mocktails all week and she said they were some of the best she's ever had on a cruise ship. And the Bloody Mary from the wake, she said it's probably the best Bloody Mary she's ever had and it was a mocktail. Now let's talk about that itty bitty pool and the sun decks. Now when I first saw the reviews and I saw some of the blogs out there, I was like, that can't be the only pool. I mean, there's 3,000 people on this ship. It's going to the Caribbean. There have to be at least three or four pools on that ship to cool off. No, you've got that main pool in the middle, which is essentially a plunge pool with a shallow area on either side. And then you've got a big jetted pool back there by Jim and Tonic and that's it. That's all that's on the ship. But the pools themselves are actually rather lovely and there is a way that you can enjoy them if you like the pool. So the trick to getting in the pool on the Scarlet Lady is to do a ship day. When everybody else is in the port, you've got the whole pool to yourself. It's the same thing with the other pool behind us. Rebecca was just saying we think the pool is about the size of our balcony and the cheeky corner suite. But as you can see, you can actually swim in it. You just gotta do it while you're in a port day try to do this when you're at sea there's going to be about 500 people in this little pool and there'll be about 200 people in that other little pool and in terms of shade anywhere on decks 15 or 16 especially on deck 16 there is not a lot of shade anywhere that is pretty much if you worship the sun deck 16 is for you on deck 15 on either side of the main pool there are some shaded loungers in there uh, there might be about a dozen on either side so there's not that many of them and there's a few other shaded areas, but really not a lot. Now up on 16, there's these red clamshell kind of things that if the sun is on the right side, you will be in the shade. And there are cabanas for rent as well down the side of a ship. One kind of odd thing is the hot tubs are exactly that, hot tubs. There's no jets in them, at least not the ones around the pool. They were just circulating hot water and that was pretty much it. I did hear that the ones up in Richard's rooftop had some jets in them, but we never used them. And one area that's really wasted on deck 16 is that whole aft net area. I mean, they made a big deal out of this thing. It's a catamaran net, it's gonna be so cool. You can sit up there, you got the ocean underneath you. Well, you know, where that net comes together, you see all these plastic balls. Those are like two or three inch hard plastic balls. And when you go to lay on it, it's not exactly the most comfortable thing in the world. When you lay back on an actual catamaran net, it's really comfortable, it's nice. You can sit out there for hours. It's good enough to take an Instagram photo or to make a short video like this. But as far as an area to relax and hang out for a while, no. And in fact, the entire aft area back there was barely used during our entire cruise. I would love to see Virgin Voyages consider replacing that net area with a pool when the ship goes in for its first dry dock. I mean, it's a lovely aft area back there. You can either have an infinity pool that looks out over the back or just a pool that just sits right up against the back so you can look out the aft. Maybe put a swim up bar, put a little music venue up there so you can have people playing music during the day, but that would be a much more useful and popular space back there if they had a pool and it would move some of the people from the other pools. Oh, and I have to mention the peekaboo bathrooms. There's four peekaboo bathrooms around the main pool. What's a peekaboo bathroom? You're on the Scarlet Lady, you're hanging out by the pool and you say, man, I gotta use the bathroom. So you come into this really nice bathroom. Oh, you sit down on the toilet and then you look outside. And when we came home, we found out, yes, people can see inside. So if you've got a ship alongside and you're in those bathrooms, the people outside can see you. So that actual pool area, even though we've all picked on it, is rather lovely if you can actually get in there to use it. You know, go there before 1030 in the morning, you should be fine, or just stay on board during a port day. The variety and quality of the entertainment on board was actually a pleasant surprise. I mean, pretty much what we saw before going on this cruise ship, you know, we saw, you know, the loud sex show. We saw the weird dance party thing. Of course, we saw Scarlet Night and we're like, okay, is that what all the entertainment is about? No, 
It is not. Okay, first of all, there is outstanding live music throughout the ship. There are guitar players, the house band. I mean, they were doing like an Irish band one day, they're doing a rock band another day. They were incredibly versatile. We came across an amazing blues guitarist named Slam Allen. I had no idea there was blues on the ship. There was cabaret singing, there was blues, there were musicians playing everywhere. I mean, just take a listen to Slam. I'm liking this voyage already. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're the kind of person that just wants to have a couple of cocktails and listen to a musician, you can do that. You want to hear a singer? You can do that. You just want to sit quietly and talk with friends? You can do that. And then there's the Red Room with the big show. Now that's their version of a theater. It's a very interesting space. It's like a big black box theater. They have bleacher seats that can come out. Well, they're not bleachers, they're individual seats, but they do come out from the wall or they go all the way back. So for the Untitled Dance Party thing, it was just a big open floor with a stage in the middle and it was kind of a weird show, but it was all experimental dance. So it is gonna be a little weird, but they had a big dance stage in the middle and then the whole audience was just standing around and they could participate if they wanted to. Now, Dual Reality was quite an interesting show. It was their take on Romeo and Juliet and I could clearly see a West Side Story influence as well. What was neat about it was you could actually follow along. And one side of the audience is on one team and the other side of the audience on the other team. The story actually worked. Now, were they the best shows we've ever seen on a cruise ship? No, I mean, I made it through about 10 minutes of a dance party thing, but love dual reality. Oh, the Diva was absolutely fantastic. Now, that's like a cabaret show, drag show, all mixed in one. And it was done in the manor, which is supposedly modeled after the original Studio 54 in New York. Cool venue, great show, a lot of fun. And then of course the social club is open all day and night. They've got the games down there, they've got the arcade, so you can keep yourself entertained down there. Now most evenings they had a trivia round running back in the dock house. One night they even did stargazing out on the back, out on the dock. And then there is Scarlet Night. So what exactly is Scarlet Night? So that is our answer to every other cruise line's formal night. Okay. So here at Virgin Voyages, we celebrate the bravery of the sailor and his love for the octopus goddess every Scarlet Night. Some call it a holiday, some call it a party. I call it both. I have to say, Scarlet Night was a lot of fun. You know, it starts here in the roundabout. They all start with this dance number. And then more dancers just suddenly appeared over to the side and they're doing sea shanties. They're doing electronic music. They're doing all kinds of music. And then once they're done in the roundabout, everybody moves upstairs to the pool deck. Now, if you're sensitive to sound, I highly recommend bringing earplugs because the show is absolutely outrageous. It's amazing, but it's loud. I mean, it is beyond loud up there. And I could take it for about 10 minutes. I had earplugs back in the cabin, and by the time I walked back to the cabin, I didn't feel like walking back up to the show. But Scarlet Night is not to be missed, in my opinion. Now, for some really fun entertainment, they have private karaoke. Three booths, a small one, a middle one, and a larger one. I don't do karaoke because I don't sing in front of people, but I had so much fun doing private karaoke with my friends. I mean, I don't know if you're gonna appreciate my singing. The spot north of Havana. Now, one really fun aspect of their entertainment is the secret shows. A crew member will walk up to you and ask you, would you like to see a secret show? And they'll give you a little hint of what it's about, and they'll tell you whether it's sexual in nature or not because yes, the sexologist or whatever she's called, she puts on a secret show as well. And all you're told is to show up at a certain place at a certain time on the ship. And so we did. Okay, so according to Christine, we gotta get down to deck eight. Deck eight is all cabins. 
I'm letting Christine and George go first, so if anything happens, in anybody jumps out, they, they get it first. Hey, shh. You're not discreet. Don't say anything. They said be discreet. Oh, 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 know, oh, oh, oh. No, 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 no. Just go, go, go. Because if anything happens, it'll happen to you, and we'll just stay way back. We'll let your family know what happened. I have no idea where we... This is amazing. I've never been... Other than going on a tour of a ship, I've never been backstage of the ship. And the secret show is not only secret, but it's not even in... It's not even in the main ship. Coming in. That was the most bizarre thing. We just kind of walked through the ship. Please, take them. Other than a ship tour, I've... So they took my phone and my GoPro away, so I can't show you, but it was this cool little space literally in the bow of the ship. It was like an unfinished space in the bow of the ship. I want to say there were maybe 20 or 30 of us up there, and it was a magician doing this sleight of hand that was ridiculous. I mean, absolutely ridiculous. It was so cool. So if somebody walks up to you and says, would you like to see a secret show? Say yes. <laughs> So that was a nice surprise. You know, going in, we kind of thought it was going to be all these big wild parties, but it's not. There's just a lot of really good, especially musical entertainment throughout the ship. But if you want a nice quiet night, just want to go sit at the bar, or you just want to go sit somewhere in the ship, there are plenty of quiet spaces all over the ship, even at night. Stunning here in Bimini. Look at that. The Scarlet Lady is right behind us. Kind of similar to uh, Grand Turk. Except the ship isn't quite so close, but... It's kind of cool. The Bimini Beach Resort, I think, is my favorite cruise line operated private resort. Now, it's not really operated by Virgin Voyages. A company called Resort World actually added it on to one of their resort areas, but it has some of the softest sand, had a nice shallow walkway. I think we could walk into the water good 100, maybe 150 feet out. I'm only five foot seven and I could still touch the bottom almost all the way out. Now we were in the Rockstar section, so we had a covered building. That's where they served us the food. They had the bar over there. As I mentioned before, the food was okay. And there was plenty of seating out there by the beach. And then of course, you've got the pool over there as well. It is a really lovely space to just chill and relax. Now one thing I will warn you, the tram that they use to drive you from the ship to the resort and back, it's a rough ride because the roads is not that great. But the resort itself is absolutely stunning. Now let's talk about the rock star life and do you have to be a rock star or a mega rock star in order to get the best experience on Virgin Voyages? All right, well, let's talk about that. First of all, the balcony in our cheeky corner suite was over 500 square feet. That's bigger than almost every cabin that we've ever had on a cruise ship. I think the cabin itself was around 350 square feet. So, you know, we had like almost 900 square feet between the balcony and our cabin. It's a big area. What's included when you're a rock star? Well, you get a rock star agent, it's basically your concierge. So they take care of, I don't know how many cabins at a time, but you know, they can make dinner reservations. They can make show reservations. They can take care of things at the uh, Bimini Resort. Or like in our case, we needed some more uh, liquor for our bar. So they brought up some different liquor for the bar. And yes, you have a fully stocked bar in your cabin. Whatever you don't use, you can take home. Like the full bottles of liquor, you can just take those home. In addition to the bar, you have the record player and your rock star agent will swap out the record for whatever you like. Obviously, you're gonna get your own special lounge in the terminal in Miami, and you'll get priority embarkation ahead of everybody else. At Bimini, you do get access to the private golf carts. You get access to Richard's rooftop, which is a private area up on deck 16. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then you get the rock star area at the Bimini Resort. So those are the things that you get for being a rock star. Now, some of the things that are not included that you might typically get if you're a sweet guest on another ship uh, might be like a special restaurant. There's a restaurant just for sweet guests or a special lounge somewhere on the ship. There is Richard's rooftop up top and there's no special events just for sweet guests. You know, like a meet and greet with the captain and the officers or something like that. There was none of that for being a sweet guest as a rock star. So Richard's rooftop is a suite only area in the front of deck 16. It's literally like right on top of the bridge. It's right at the very front of the ship. It has a bar up there. They had a champagne social every night from 5.30 to 7. All the champagne you can drink. There's a couple of hot tubs up there. And it's about 98% sun, especially when the ship is moving. Uh, the umbrellas really couldn't stay up because the, the wind would just shred them up. So when the ship is moving, it's about 98% sun up there. We actually only went up there a couple of times to get the champagne. I think the first night and maybe the second night, but other than that, 
we really didn't use Richard's rooftop because it was just too dang hot in the Caribbean. I wish like maybe at least one side of it had some of those really big sails that would just, you know, give us some shade up there. We might've used it a little bit more. And I can tell you that the space was not utilized nearly as much as you might expect for a suite area. So I don't personally think Richard's rooftop added any value because there was so much space around the ship where you could relax on your own and there were so many great bars all over the ship. It wasn't like, oh, I've got to go there to get a really good drink. I could get a really good drink at the pool bar. So every guest on the ship, whether you're in an interior or you're a mega rock star suite, I mean, everybody gets to eat at the same restaurant. Everybody goes to the same shows. Yes, there's a rock star space in Bimini. Yes, you do get a rock star agent who's basically your concierge, but do you need to be a rock star to get the most out of Virgin Voyages? Now that we've done it, I'd say no. I, if it's me, I'm gonna go ahead and book balconies from now on because there's so much included for everybody that the value of having a suite is really the prestige of having it. Even the bar, I did the math when we got home. I think I brought home about $300 worth of liquor. I mean, I could have just gone down the street and bought that liquor myself. So. Yes, it is nice to have. I'm not going to lie. It's really nice to have the little perks that go with it, but it's definitely not necessary when it comes to Virgin Voyages that you have to be a rock star to enjoy it. So if you want to get an interior, go for it. You want to get a balcony, go for it. Don't feel like you're missing out just because you're not a rock star. Oh, and I can't leave the suite without mentioning the safety video. Ahoy, everybody. You better listen up. Oh my gosh, it was the 80s meets punk meets safety video. Best safety video ever. We got a full medical and emergency response team. If something goes wrong, they will quickly intervene. Now here's a few other things that were either misses or things that we didn't like that we haven't already talked about. But when we did get in the pool that day, there was trash in it. There was actually a big plastic cup down at the bottom. There were some sunglasses down there. There was a menu in there. Now on most cruise ships, the pools are closed at night and a lot of times they actually drain them out and then they'll refill them in the morning. Now our friends were saying they were out very late at night. Pools were still just wide open. I don't know if they don't take care of the pools as well as they should, but we actually pulled the trash out of the pool and just left it up on the side. I was kind of missing the morning captain's announcement. I mean, that's just one thing about being on a cruise. Hearing from the master of the ship, that you're like, okay, I know who's in charge of the ship, I feel good, I hear them. I mean, I kind of get why they don't because they're trying to do the anti-cruise thing, but I still think you're on a cruise ship, we should hear from the master of the vessel at least once a day. And I think this is the first cruise in a very long time. I didn't see the captain. I didn't see the first officers anywhere. Of course, it's a little hard to tell because they just wear a polo shirt. They don't wear that traditional uniform, which I think is kind of a shame. I think they've earned it. I think they should wear the uniform, or at least if they're gonna wear a polo shirt, at least have the stripes on the shirt so we know who they are. So it might've been nice to at least have some sort of a public event, you know, with the captain and the first officers. I usually like to meet them, say hello, and at least thank them for everything they do for us. I mean, they're giving us a great vacation by taking care of the ship. And then two things that we've already talked about, the galley, they just need to run that like a food hall. Don't try to run it like a restaurant. Let us go get the food and then do something about the net in the back. There's such wasted space back there. If they fix that area in the net and put a big, beautiful pool back there, that will almost be the perfect ship. So after all that, will you like Virgin Voyages? Well, you know what? If you're a fan of cruising, you really should give them a try. The food is really good. The service is really good. The ship itself is absolutely beautiful. No matter what cruise line you sail on, I think there's a lot for you to like on board the Virgin Voyages. So don't be led just by, oh, it's got sex shows on it. Oh, it's got really loud music. It's got weird shows. It does have some of that, but it's also a cruise ship. And there's some things that they're doing really, really well. I mean, having all of the food included and you're not constantly taking your card out, paying for this, paying for that, not paying for your sodas, not paying for pizza, not paying for ice cream, not paying for that stuff. You go, this is kind of nice and free Wi-Fi. Why doesn't everybody have free Wi-Fi and why doesn't everybody have Wi-Fi as good as on this ship? So I honestly believe there is something for everyone on this ship to enjoy. Now, is it a perfect ship? No. The perfect ship does not exist. I mean, maybe put an F pool on this thing and then maybe we'll talk later. But right now, the perfect ship does not exist. But is it a good ship? Should you go on it? Yes, I really think you should. I mean, don't be swayed by all of that other stuff that's out there. This is a really good, enjoyable ship. If you like to cruise, you like to eat, 
you want to be pampered day and night, and you want to enjoy your time on a cruise ship, I think you should give the Scarlet Lady a try. Now, if you want even more information on the Scarlet Lady, well, we've got a whole playlist right here on this channel. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do consider subscribing. Click the little bell icon so that you'll be notified when we've got more stuff on here. And as always, thank you so much for your support.